What's up everyone, my name is Alpha and today we're back with another Pokemon challenge video. Today we're on our weekly challenge of Pokemon Hardcore Nuzlocke Shiny Only. Today we're on Pokemon Y I think and today's challenge will be can I beat Pokemon Y Hardcore Nuzlocke with only Dragon type Shiny Pokemon. Now interestingly enough, um, I didn't know this, Kalos has a lot of Dragon type Pokemon that you can actually encounter. So I was a bit surprised by it. I thought there's like 4 at max but there's a whole like 10. There's more Dragon types than actual like fire types in this region for some reason so it'll be interesting to play through before i run through the rules and everything i want to ask you guys if you guys could leave a like to help out this video of course and help out the series to show some support on this video it really mean a lot to me let's get into the rules of this challenge video so obviously we're starting on a nuzlocke first a nuzlocke rule set includes only being able to catch the first Pokemon in each route. So in our case, I really messed it up in the last video where it said Steel types, but in our case, it is Dragon Shinies only. So the first Dragon type Shiny you find in each route is the only Pokemon you can catch. If there's multiple Dragon types in the same routes, which does happen, unfortunately, we're only able to catch the first one that we encountered. That's a Shiny one. So that is quite unfortunate as well at any time if my Pokemon has ever fainted or anything like that they are dead and they have to be put in the box and never used again. There is a death counter on the bottom left to keep you updated on these deaths. Now continuing on on the rules we have to add some harder rules. The hardcore rules of this challenge will include you must play on set mode which Basically means you cannot switch out automatically. You have to manually switch when it's your turn in battle. So you have to waste a turn switching out. There are no items inside of battles. You can use hell items, but you can't use any items from the bag, of course. And finally, there is no over leveling. So there is a level cap. We cap it off at the highest level of each gym leader's aces Pokemon. You have to enter the battle at the level cap or below. But if you're in the battle with a gym leader and your Pokemon happens to gain a level, it is okay. That's fine. But you can't have your Pokemon higher than the level cap before the battle and that should round out all the rules actually no the final and most important rule of each of my challenge video each of my pokemon will be nicknamed after you guys in the comments so thank you so much for leaving a comment in the previous challenge video if you guys want to be nicknamed after my pokemon in my future challenge video just drop it in the comments and hopefully i'll pick yours and while you're down there leaving a comment on some nicknames and some video ideas you want me to do uh, also subscribe to the channel greatly help my channel let's get into the challenge video itself unfortunately though there is no dragon type starter not including charizard since we're playing on y anyways we won't get the charizard megastone so i don't think that is a big deal that would have been interesting actually if i shiny hunted for a shiny charmander and then only allow myself to use it when i mega evolve it which that would be pretty interesting but unfortunately we do not have that luxury so we have to play through the game a little bit get through the first gym ironically and we have to head into the route with the connecting cave and here we're able to find our very first dragon type pokemon in the game the first dragon type pokemon available to us is an axu you guys know this axu is in here of all places i did not know that so axu is a five percent encounter in connecting cave so we have to search around for a little bit i also want to mention the odds have been modified to one in 1500 opposed to one in like 9,000. The odds make it a bit easier. It doesn't make it pointless. It is still time consuming to hunt down all the shiny Pokemon. I just want to be transparent and tell you guys that it has been modified. So from there, we're able to finally encounter ourselves a shiny Axew, which actually looks kind of cool as the purple eyes, which is very cool. We have to be very wary because they are dragon type Pokemon. They're pseudo legendaries. Most of them are. So they have a low catch rate, which means they're harder to catch. So I have to be very careful. Luckily, Axew wasn't the worst i mean it did knock out my frogadier uh but i'm able to uh, capture actually and put it on our team and progress into route 8 now i've actually entered route 8 and there is two things we're doing firstly we're going to encounter a bunch of pokemon in here to train up our actual to up to like level 20 and then also there is an encounter for us in here which is going to be a bagon did you guys also know this bagon spawns in this place so i didn't know bagon actually spawns in pokemon x let alone in route 8 so Bagon's also a 5% encounter, so we're able to find ourselves a shiny Bagon after a little bit of hunting, and we're able to put it on a team fairly easily. Which I thought it'd be way harder to catch Pokemon. I thought it'd be way harder to catch these pseudo Pokemon. Um, I'll be honest, but we we'll catch Bagon, put it on our team, and then head into the 3D cave with the Rhyhorn and everything. I swear in X and Y, I feel like catching Pokemon is a lot easier than like I remember. Because I swear in Ruby, Sapphire, Emerald, Platinum, all those games in the past before X and Y. They felt way harder to catch than X and Y. I caught Mewtwo in like one Ultra Ball the first time I ever played X and Y. 
and that was with no old power too so i don't know once we cleared through the 3d cave looking thing, i mean glittering cave uh we're able to get ourselves a fossil from it and we're able to revive a tyrant which is going to be our third dragon type pokemon now we've done this in the past before all we gotta do is soft reset in front of this scientist until we finally get a shiny tyrant it's not too difficult it's actually one of the easier shiny pokemon to get now we can move on into the second gym of the game where we face off against Grant. Grant is going to be the rock type gym leader and we start off the battle off against him using our Tyrant. Now Tyrant, maybe not the best choice because Amora does have I think Refrigerate so it's going to be super effective if you use takedown against me but I have no choice. I decided to start off the battle against him using my Tyrant to hopefully bite and flinch him. It did not work. He ends up taking me down, but I break through the paralysis and I'm able to bite and knock out the Amora. But unfortunately, his Tyrant's going to come out next. I had no choice here. I, if I switched out to anything, it would have died in two shots anyways, because Tyrant's actually pretty beefy as a Pokemon. So I unfortunately sacrificed my own Tyrant because I was thinking bigger picture, because my Axew and my Bagon would have been a better Pokemon than Tyrantrum. So I sent out my Axew after him and beat him down. We beat down Grant, but we had to sacrifice a Pokemon doing so. So that is unfortunate. Luckily, actually was able to knock out the Tyrant, and we get our second gym batch of the game. Ooh, with a death on the death counter already. Wow, we are not doing a deathless run. That deathless run we had a few weeks ago is not going to be repeatable. Anyways, from there, we're going to move on into the third gym, because there's not much for us to do. We're going to face off against Shiller City's Karina. Karina is going to be the fighting type gym leader in the game. We're going to start the battle off against her using our Axew. Now, Axew has Dragon Dance here. So we're able to Dragon Dance twice in front of the Mianfu. Unfortunately, it does a lot of damage with Power Punch. And I forgot to get the Eviolite from Shiller City because I'm an idiot. Uh, if I had it there, I would have just swept her entire team because I would have got three Dragon Dances off. I'm able to knock out her Mianfu and her Alucha though. And then the Machoke scared me. I wasn't too sure if I was able to one-shot it because Machoke's pretty beefy. But my Shogun got a handle. I'm pretty sure Shogun has a handle. It just takes a little bit, a bit scary at the end because he lowers my defense twice and then power punch me and then luckily it would just leer me for the third time allow me to beat him down but it got a little scary we can move on from there though now next off we could get another pokemon but uh unfortunately we skip all these trainers because we're not trying to go over the level cap which is gonna be level 34 uh we get ourselves uh, the good rod which we're able to get our next pokemon which is gonna be scrope but we have to go back into the city where we fought against the second gym leader but we don't want to face off against these trainers over here because we also have to face off against the trainers in the gym. And we can't really advise that because getting past level 34 is most likely if I went back and fought those trainers. But moving on, we're going to face off against the fourth gym in the game. We're going to face off against Ramos. Ramos is going to be the grass type gym leader of the game. And we're starting to battle off against him using our Shogun. Now, Shogun actually has Rock Tomb. He learned Rock Tomb, so that's pretty nice. And loves acrobatics easily. So we're able to two-shot down the Jump Bluff and knock him out. Next up, he's going to switch out into his go -Go. Now, I don't have a plan for go at all. I decided to lower his speed as much as I can and try to get him low enough so I can switch out to my Axew. He's about to knock out my Shogun. So I got to switch out to my Axew. Unfortunately, Axew is not a fracture just yet. So we're going to try to gauge how much the Dragon Claw can do. I decided to go for a Dragon Dance in front of the Go-Go. Now, he did end up <laughs> hitting me in the face with a takedown. I could live another one, so I decided to Assurance him and allow me to Dragon Claw and knock him out in the following turn. And I know actually was pretty strong, so I could knock out the Weeping Bell in the following turn. And we end up beating Ramos just barely. It's getting very close, you know. We're about to lose something, it feels like. But that should be it. The level cap jumps up to level 37, allowing us to go back into the second gym's town. I forgot the name of it, I'll be honest. But we're able to go fish up some Scrubs. Uh, Scrub is going to be an annoying shiny Pokemon because fishing takes forever in this game. Also, I don't have a Pokemon with Suction Cup. So shiny hunting with this is quite annoying. So we're eventually going to find ourselves a shiny Scrub, put it on our team, and now move on into another annoying part. We're going to head into Route 13, which is going to be the Desert Route. This place has two different Dragon-type Pokemon. One is going to be a Trap Bench. The other one's going to be a Gilbo. We don't have a choice in it, but most likely we're going to get a Trap Bench since it's a higher spawn rate. But we're really holding out for a Gilbo. Um, the another annoying part is Dug Trios and Trap Pinch also have Arena Traps. And none of my Pokemon are Flying Types. So I had to just, you know, do a little tinkering. Give myself a Flying Type just for this area so I could run away and... Don't spend 30 hours getting trapped by Arena Trap by Trap Pinch and Dugtrios. I gave myself a Talonflame just so I could hunt some shiny Pokemon a little bit easier. 
we end up encountering a trap pinch as our shiny Pokemon. Now technically I could run away from it since it's a ground type Pokemon, but I decided to play fair. I mean, it gave me a trap pinch. You know what? I just take it. I wanted a Gilbo, it didn't give me a Gilbo. So we're gonna catch ourselves a trap pinch and put it on our team. Now we can move on into the power plant, which we have to be very careful. We have to be very selective who we face off and who gets experience. We turn off the XP share for this area because level 37 is most likely gonna be passed if I do have the XP share. We're able to manage our XP and face off against the fifth gym leader in the game uh, with all my Pokemon available to us. We're gonna start the battle off against him using my shell gun against his Amoga. I didn't even name him. His Clement, he's the electric type gym leader. We're going to beat down his Amoga using my Rock Tomb Shogun, which actually Rock Tomb stays on <laughs> him for the rest of the game, ironically. Uh, he goes out into his Magneton next. I'm going to go out into my Vibrava. Vibrava is going to two-shot him with a Bodos. End up knocking him out, which is nice. And I didn't know how bad Clement's team was against ground types until he sends out his Heliolisk next. His Heliolisk has Quick Attack as a defense against ground types. So we're able to two-shot down his Heliolisk. And we're able to beat Clement and get the 5th gym badge. From there, we're going to head into Route 14, which is going to be the muddy area, the little marsh area in the game. We're able to find ourselves a uh, Gumi in the WoW, which we're going to go shiny hunting for it. Actually, a better spawn rate for Gumi, 20% is in the water. So we're going to start shiny hunting in the water, opposed to the grass. And we find ourselves a Gumi without any trouble at all. Gumi is actually a really cool looking shiny, actually. That's, that's an adorable little slime thing. We're able to capture it and put it on our team as our next Pokemon. Now, it did do a lot of damage to me. I was very scared. This is why after this encounter, I bought more Ultra Balls instead of Pokeballs, because Gumi started almost knocking out my entire team. From there though, our next challenge will be facing off against the Fairy type gym leader in the game. Now, we have to do some tinkering. We're gonna go back to finally go to Shallow City and get ourselves an Eviolite. We're gonna get ourselves the Swords Dance TM and the Bodos TM, and also go back to Shallow City because I forgot it. We're gonna get the Poison Jab TM so we can beat down those pesky fairy type Pokemon. Now we're gonna face off against the sixth gym leader in the game. We're gonna face off against Valerie. Valerie is going to be the fairy type gym leader. She's gonna start the battle off against us using a Mawau. I'm gonna start the battle off against her using my Vibrava, which will two shot down the Mawau, which I mean waste all her potions, which is nice. So we don't have to worry about that later on. We're able to knock out the Mawau. She can switch out into her Mr. Mime next. Now I needed a way to get into my fracture. So I could sword sense and poison jab whoever. But unfortunately, I'm not able to get like an opening because it's gonna spam Dazzling Gleam into my Pokemon. So I should have switched out the first turn. I assume it's gonna try to use Dazzling Gleam the first turn, but it set up a light screen, so I was like, oh, now it's gonna Dazzling Gleam spam me. So unfortunately, my Vibrafa has to go down, but I'm able to switch out to my very cool looking fracture. It's going to sword sense right in front of the Mr. Mime. Take a Dazzling Gleam to his face since it has an Eviolite. And I'm able to Poison Trap, knock out the Mr. Mime and also the Sylveon. And we end up beating Valerie, but we have to sack another Pokemon. We end up sacking our Vibravo at the cusp of it almost evolving into a Flygon. From there though, we're going to finally evolve our Fracture into a Haxorus. Beautiful, shiny. Look, the black and red on it looks amazing. Perfect shiny Pokemon, honestly. From there, we're going to face off against the 7th gym leader in the game. We're going to face off against Olympia. Olympia is going to be the psychic type gym leader, and she only has 3 Pokemon. So, it's not that scary of a team over here. I'm just getting Sword Stance 3 times in front of her. Sword Stance Haxorus is actually more strong than Dragon Dance Haxorus in, in single player Pokemon, opposed to a competitive. Obviously, Dragon Dance is more, it's better in my opinion in competitive. But Sword Stance is better in single player because you get boosted up quicker and you just do infinite damage. We're going to 3 shot down her, we're going to knock out the Siglyph, we're going to knock out the Slow King and also the Meowstic. Most of which had to reflect up anyway so it didn't matter at all. So we end up beating Olympia very easy because Haxor is broken as a Pokemon. So we're going to get the 7th gym batch of the game and we can move on into the next area. Where we're going to face off against the Team Flare members. This Malamar over here, I accidentally boost up its attack and then it superpowered me and I almost knocked out my poor Salamence. So, looks like I can switch up to my Gudra, take all the damage and also hit him with a special move. And we avoid <laughs> almost losing a Pokemon from there. After that, we're going to face off against Yvelto. Yvelto is going to be the legendary Pokemon. We're forced to capture it, so not too big of an issue, but... The biggest issue is when we face off against Lysander, since we don't have a full party, which is my fault obviously, we have to start off the battle off against him using my Yuvelto. 
I have to, firstly, I have to sack Yavoto, but that allows the Mianchao to get set up right in front of my <laughs> Yavoto, which means I have to go out into my Salamence. I can't even set out with my Haxorus right now, so I have to go out to my Salamence to fly, to knock out the Mianchao, and then force in the Pyro, so I still don't have a chance to really set up. I knock out the Pyro using my Salamence, obviously, and then he's going to switch out into his Honchkrow. I took this opportunity to try and set up against the Honchkrow, which is actually a smart idea. Not because I set up against the Honchkrow, it's because I saved my Salamence HP. Now, I set up against the Honchkrow, which is a bad play. I end up Dragon Clawing, knock him out, and then he can switch out to his Gyarados. I know I can knock him out in one shot. So I switched out to my Salamence, which when I'm setting out against the Gyarados, I'm able to lower his attack stat, and then I fly off against him, so I avoid an attack. I do him way more than half, and then I come down, he's getting outraged me. I live with 1 HP, luckily. Oh my god. And then I can fly out once again, knock out the Gyarados. Lucky I don't miss the fly, and I'm able to beat Lysander and save my Salamence. See, actually, smart play by switching out my Salamence against the Huntscrow. And then we end up beating down Team Flare. Everything's normal. And uh, we're going to face off against all three of our rivals right here. Beat them down on the bridge. Like, nah, I have a bunch of pseudo legendaries on my team. There's no way they're getting past me. But from there, we're going to face off against the eighth and final gym leader in the game. We're going to face off against Wolfric. Wolfric is going to be the ice type gym leader in the game. We're going to start the battle off against him using our Gudra. Now, I taught Gudra a fire move called Fire Blast. So this actually ends up pretty well for me because I one shot down the bomb of snow. Knock him out in one shot. He can switch out to his Cryogonal. I should have, I don't know. Did was could I get flamethrower? I don't know. I two shot him using Fire Blast, which actually ends up well for me, but I'm down to red HP, so I can't risk him fighting off against the Avalok in the back. So I switched out into my Drag Lich, which unfortunately I sludge bomb into the Avalok, which will do over half to him, but it is gonna avalanche and knock out my poor Drag Lich. So that's the only time you really see Draglich. So Draglich goes down. Look, I switch out to my special attacking Gudra once again. And I could just Dragon Pulse into him, knock him out for sure. And we end up beating Wolfric. Unfortunately, we lose a Pokemon to him, which I think is more embarrassing that we lost the Pokemon than sad that we lost a Pokemon because Wolfric is complete garbage. Our death counter has been risen to three now. So we're going to pack it up and get some better Pokemon. We go back into Terminus Cave. Uh, Terminus Cave is a route where we could get another Dragon type Pokemon. We could go find ourselves a Norbat, but Norbat's only able to be encountered in these like drop spots. So luckily enough, we find ourselves a shiny Norbat after a very long time of hunting, and then we're able to capture it, put it on a team, and then move on. Now, unfortunately, the next Pokemon we have to catch is a Dragonair. We could get Altario here or a Dragonair. We decide to opt for a Dragonair, but it's going to take longer because we have to fish up a Jotina or Dragonair using a Super Rod. It's a 5% encounter, I think, and it's just not fun. Luckily enough, we find ourselves a pink Dragonair in the wild, and we're able to put it on a team. And, jeez, that, that, was, that was really not worth it at all. From there, we can move on into Victory Road. Victory Road has our last Dragon-type Pokemon available to us. It's going to have a Dredagon or a Dino. Most likely, Dino is like a 5% encounter. Dredagon is a 40% encounter. So I think most likely we're going to find ourselves a Dredagon. And we end up fighting. Guess, guess what? We found ourselves a Dredagon. So none of the Pokemon we really wanted. I wanted a Dino. Actually, yeah. Dino would have been able to meet the level cap and evolve to a Hydreigon. So I really wanted a Dino and I really wanted a Garchomp. Didn't get a single one of them. But we catch ourselves a Dragon, which has the same color scheme kind of as Shiny Salamence. Interesting. They kind of just color swap it for no reason. And from there, we can move on into the Elite Four after beating Victory Road. Now, our first Elite Four challenge we're going to face off is going to be Malva. Malva is going to be the fire type Elite Four member. We start the battle off against her using my Dragonite, the Green Dragonite, the iconic Green Dragonite. She can start the battle off against us using a Pyro, which is going to Noble Roar me each time I want to use Dragon Dance, which is very annoying. We're going back and forth. Eventually, she's going to give up and then allow me to attack her using my Aqua Tail. Then knock her out. But this will force her into full restoring, which allows me to Dragon Dance once more, and the battle's over. I mean, I Aquatel into the Pyro to knock it out. Aquatel into the Torco to knock it out. The Town Flame will get out speed and also Aquatel in the face, knocked out. And our final Pokemon will be a Chandelure, which I missed in Aquatel, so I'm not going to risk it anymore. I switched out to my. No, I'm not going to risk that. Luckily, I do have a Salamence with Rock Tomb still, so I'm able to two shot him using Rock Tomb, and we end up. Why am I switching so much? I go to my Hacks. I, I'm very paranoid of losing my Pokemon, but we end up beating Malwa without losing a single Pokemon. Now we can move on into the second Elite Four member. We're going to face off against Wingstrom. Wingstrom is going to be the Steel type Elite Four member. 
So we're going to start the battle off against him using my Haxorus. We're going to try to, for some reason, I decided, I thought I could sweep him. Use my Haxorus. I saw his sense once against him. He's going for a Dazzling Gleam, which ended up doing over half to me, so I can't even set up again. I Bodo's into the Clef Key to knock him out, and then he goes into his Pearl Pass. For some reason, I Dragon Claw him, but uh, I take a Power Gym. Luckily enough, I am able to knock him out with a following Bodo's, which is nice, but my Haxorus is at, like, 30 HP, so I so I can't really advise me going for a Bodo's against the Age Slash. I gotta switch out into my Salamence. Salamence is able to take an Iron Head, and then I can switch out once again. Lowers attack stat, and then I can go into my Gujo to Fire Blast twice against him. Which ends up pretty well for us, because we're able to knock out the Aegis Slash, and then the Scissor comes out. It is going to, unfortunately, dodge my Fire Blast, which is tough, and then do a lot of damage to me using Iron Head. So I decided to switch out into my Flygon to fly into the Scissor to knock him out eventually. He does have Bullet Punch as a move. I swear he didn't, but he does have Bullet Punch, so we're able to knock him out and beat the second Elite Four member. Moving on, we're going to face off against the Dragon-type Elite Four member. We're going to face off against Drasna. Drasna is going to start the battle off against us using a Draglitch, and I'm not going to spoil it to you, but her team is kind of trash. So we're going to start the battle off against her using my Salamence to Dragon Claw, knock her out in one shot. I mean, that's that's basically it. Dragon Claw into the Altaro to knock it out. Dragon Claw into the Norburn to knock it out. I get outspeed, but that's fine. And then I have so much faith in my Salamence to knock out the Dragon. I do end up Dragon Clawing and just four-shotting her entire team and we beat Drasna in under a minute and a half. And from there, we're going to move on into the final Elite Four member. We're going to face off against Seelberg. Seelberg is going to be the water type Elite Four member. We're going to start the battle off against him using our Gujra. Now, Gujra has this move called Thunderbolt. So we're able to Thunderbolt into the Clawitzer, paralyze him. But unfortunately, he's obviously going to shake it off and just hit me with Dragon Post. I'm able to knock him out in the following turn. And he can switch out into Starmie next. Now, Starmie is going to Light Screen, whatever. I'm trying to go for another Paralyze. It did not work. So I decided to back out Plan B. Plan B was to go into my Haxorus, which takes a Dazzling Gleam. Uh, I could take another one, it looks like. No, I can't. But Dragon Claw will knock him out regardless, so it didn't matter if I could take one or not. He goes into his Gyarados next. I decided to go out into my Salamence, which was a risky play because he could have like Ice Fang me or something. I am able to Rock Tomb into him, survive an Ice Fang, which I actually don't know how I survived. But I'm able to Rock Tomb him, and then I'm able to go out to my Gudra to Thunderbolt because I know I outspeed. Knock out the Gyarados for sure. And then her last Pokemon will be a Barbarico, which I go out into my Dragon for the first time and superpower into him. I don't superpower into him, I Night Slash. Nice. What a great play. So that was a horrible play. I go out into, yeah, well, it puts me in a worse situation. I don't know who to go out into next. I go into my Dragon. Luckily, he misses his Stone Edge. So I can surf into him and then Dragon Rush to finish him off. Unfortunately, I said Dragon Rush and I used Dragon Rush and it missed and my Dragonite went down. And I'm like, oh, why, why now? I, if I just superpower using my Dragon, this would have been an issue. But go out to my Guja to Thunderbolt and knock out the Barbarico. And unfortunately, we are we had to lose a Pokemon in the final battle. Now next up, we face off against the champion. We're gonna face off against Diantha, which I now realize it might be a play on Diana, Princess Diana in real life. But anyways, we're gonna face off against Diantha, starting the battle off against her using my Salamence. Against her Halucha, we're going to fly into the Halucha to one-shot it and knock it out. Fairly easy. She goes out to an Aurorus, which I go out to my Dragon. I avoided the Blizzard, which might have just one-shot my poor Dragon. I know I had speed, so I can superpower, finally. And I can knock out the Aurorus, which is kind of cool. I, mean, I one of my favorite looking Pokemon. Not a really good Pokemon by itself. She goes out into her own Guja. I go out into my Norvern. I take a Dragon Pulse. Not a good play. But... You know, I have to sack something because I need to get my Haxorus in. I go for a Hurricane. Doesn't matter. I'm sacking my Norvern. So you go out into my Haxorus. I know I can take one Dragon Post because Norvern took one. Sword Stance right in front of him. And like I said, Sword Stance over Dragon Dance in single player. Dragon Claw will knock out the Gujra and the battle is basically over. She switched out into her Tyrandrum, which is super effective against it too. Dragon Claw will knock him out. Goes out into her Gorgas. Dragon Claw will knock that thing out. And her final Pokemon will be a Mega Gardevoir, which will get Poison Jab in his face and knocked out. And we finally beat the champion Diantha in the game. We beat Pokemon by a hardcore Dragon-type shiny Pokemon only. I'm pretty disappointed in my plays at the end against Uber. And, well, I guess Diantha, I had to sack someone so I could get my Haxorus in. But, all in all, not too bad of a run. It's actually pretty fun to use these Dragon-type Pokemon because they're pretty strong. 
but they're pretty weak at the same time because they take forever to level up they take forever to evolve and they get power crap very easily so honestly i gotta get this this is not this wasn't a cakewalk using all pseudo legendaries it's actually kind of hard so if you guys want to try it out yourself i really recommend it uh but anyways i want to say thank you so much for watching all the way today and i hope you guys all enjoyed this video if you guys can please leave a like on this video and comment down below some challenge it is you guys want me to do and subscribe if you guys are not already it will greatly help my channel my name has been alpha hope you guys all had a great day and i'm out peace